For Arduino ESP32 and other microcontroller projects such as small cars or robots, replacing the power switch with something more flexible is now an easy possibility. There are lots of reasons why you might want to replace your power switch. There's the convenience of turning it off with a remote control. It can reduce the drain in your battery if you have some auto shutdown sequence and if you have some electronics that may monitor current or some critical errors, you could shut it down uh, remotely. Now the ideal switch should have uh, a physical switch still and perhaps a remote physical switch that's smaller than a big clunky slide switch. It's going to route the battery voltage to the vehicle. Uh, the vehicle, the a microcontroller in the vehicle should be able to control the switch, turn it off or on. And you want low current draw when the switch is off between the battery and the vehicle. Ideally you want zero, but if it's an electronic switch there'll be some current draw, but it should be in the nanoamp range. Now you may hear about deep sleep for microcontrollers. Why can't I just put my microcontroller to sleep and it'll save power? But that's on a development board and there are still LEDs and lots of other electronics on that development board which draws power. You may also have servos and motor controllers that you can't fully uh, disable. So really the only way to shut down everything is to switch off the power from your uh, power source. Now there's lots of YouTube videos out there to show you how to design power latch circuits. And this is one such circuit. And you can see there's about 10 or so components, but the problems with these is that you've got to build them. Some of them are surface mount components. Uh, and they can be difficult to put onto a printed circuit board. They generally work by having a GPIO pin control uh, a uh, input into the, uh, into the power switch. So maybe it goes high to turn this latch circuit on or off. And this would be a very simple latching circuit. But the first hand of engineering is don't reinvent the wheel and today you don't need to do that. This is just one power switch module which I found. There may be others out, uh, out in the industry. This is a Pololu 2808. It can handle input voltages from 2 to 20 volts and it can switch from 3 to 6 amps. You'll see there's a mini and a big size of it. It's well engineered and it's fairly cheap. It's only $5 US as of the time of this, uh, uh, this taping. You can see it's in a fairly small container and you can get full specs on it. Uh, unlike uh, power switches you may find from AliExpress, you'll get an electronic board there, but you'll get absolutely no circuit diagrams. So you have no idea how they work. So this is the block diagram of that 2808, and you can see it's got a couple back-to-back -back, uh, MOSFETs. It does have a power LED, which is only on when it's turned on. When you turn power off, that uh, LED will go off. And it's got th this particular one has three control circuits. You can turn it on remotely, turn it off remotely. Control can configure how the uh, external push button works, I believe. Now, what are the benefits? So in the example that I'm going to give here, the fairly small size, it allows for an off-board switch. It's got better turn-on characteristics than just having a bouncy mechanical switch, which could turn your power off and on for milliseconds if you're familiar with mechanical bounce. It can auto shut off, which is a huge uh, benefit. Also some drawbacks over mechanical switches, but none of these drawbacks are really important to us in a small project like we're going to show here. It's one way directional. You're only turning power from one input to an output. It can't go in the other direction. Limited voltage range, uh, 2 to 20 volts handles up to about a 5S battery. That's generally not a problem. The switch could lose its state when powered on. That is, if you connect up the battery, all of a sudden your device may power up. But if you have uh, the switch that's either on board or if you have an off board switch, you can just press the switch and quickly turn it off. So that's not really a disadvantage in this application. Switch is only DC. And if you're using a battery circuit, you're just using DC. Now there's not complete isolation in the off state but it's nanoamps and so you're not going to drain 
uh, your battery in any significant way. The application we're going to show for this is in building, uh, I recently built a, a mini dump RC vehicle from professorboots.com. His model, uh, all the 3D parts is on printables.com if you want to look at it here. And it's controlled by an ESP32 and a controller board that he's designed. So I designed my own custom uh, RC controller board with support for this particular uh, electronic power switch and I'll, I'll show you some of the benefits of that. So here's two copies of this board. On the right hand side uh, and in the next version you can see that in the same footprint you can have either the Pololu board installed, as you see on the left, or you can have stakes just uh, or uh, pads just for a power switch if you choose not to use an electronic power switch. There's a place there for a remote push button, and now this push button can be very light duty because it's not going to handle amps of current. So the idea here is you have a 2S battery, can be a LiPo, can be other different form factors. It's going to come into the power switch, which is then going to control that and send that uh, off here to a regulator. And the regulator is going to provide regulated voltage for the rest of the circuit. Now this board has parts on both sides. So you'll see I have uh, uh, motor controllers here. The ESP is actually going to be on the other side of, of this PCB. So our application is this called the mini dump and you can see that the controller board sitting in here with a, a small lipo battery. I've installed a offboard remote switch. It wasn't designed in so this could be uh, hidden um, fairly easily and recessed into the body if it was designed for it. Now you've got to use these low bounce tactile switches which have a little click. These boards, uh, power switch boards, don't work very well with bouncy switches like this. So let's look at some of the applications. The first is the remote switch. And what we're seeing here is just that. You can press a remote switch and it's going to turn on or turn off. The next application is how would we power this off with a remote and what we're going to do here is show the code in the Arduino IDE, the C code. We're using a PS3 remote and the PS3 controller library. So in the PS3 library there are these little routines event button down routines. So if you hit the X or the cross button on the remote, it's just going to call this little routine, which is simply going to do a write to this port. Now this is set up for GPIO 13 in my case. So it's just going to, the ESP is going to write to this port and it's going to write a high signal. The printed circuit board is going to route this to the off switch of the electronic switch and simply the switch is going to turn off. So this code is very, very simple. We'll see this in action. So we've turned it on and you'll see the lights, the headlights flash. That just indicates state of the battery. We've now paired and we can control our truck. And now we're going to turn it off by just hitting this X button and boom power goes off. We'll look at powering off after some inactivity and we're going to use this routine in the PS3 library which just falls into here if the left joystick has moved up and down the L the Y direction or left or right. And all we're going to do in this routine is just store the current time in milliseconds. So this base time is really just storing the current time. In every Arduino uh, code block or uh, piece of software, there's a loop which operates continuously. And in this loop, if the current time minus the last time when the joystick was moved is greater than some timeout value, so you, and this timeout value is in milliseconds, so you may put a number here that represents, say, five minutes. 
So if the current time minus the last time we moved the joystick is greater than five minutes, I might want to shut down. Now you can change this to five minutes, 10 minutes, 10 seconds, whatever you want by just putting a, a different value in here. But when that happens, we're going to simply call power down, which is just going to send a high out to the off input of our power switch. Again, fairly simple uh, circuitry. We'll see this in operation here by turning our device on, pairing it. And we're just gonna leave it for 10 seconds and I haven't cut or edited this at all. And you'll see this will go off automatically. There we go. So closing thoughts here are that you can use this with protected and unprotected lithium batteries. So you'll see a couple uh, protected batteries here which can be recharged by USB-C or you can use a LiPo. Roughly these are the same size. However, when you put holders in these batteries, generally the size is twice that of a LiPo. Now, these have a little more capacity than this, sometimes twice, but uh, the capacity that's listed on these types of batteries is often suspect. But they generally have a little more capacity uh, for the same size here, but once you put them in the holder, they certainly take up more room. However, the LiPo has probably five times the discharge limit. This can probably give you up to about 10 amps if you need it. Now, one of the problems I've had, I've killed a few LiPo batteries by simply leaving them on and having a LiPo fully discharge. So you don't want your batteries to discharge or go through a whole cycle if you don't need to. So having the auto power off is a real, a real benefit. You don't want to come to dead batteries and then have to wait a couple hours to charge it up. The convenience of that small outer remote switch, I don't need to flip the hood and fiddle with turning a larger switch on. That's a big convenience. And also switching off just from a remote. So those are some of the use cases for these power switch that you may want to put into your next uh, microcontroller project.